Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Jennifer Gianni, and today we're going to take a look at the reformer, squatting, and second chakra work. In a previous episode, we talked some about first chakra work, how we can physically in our body start to build that energy center. We did the standing exercise where we brought the femurs over the center of the talus head and we lined up our respiratory and our pelvic diaphragms so that we really stood on our center. So our first chakra is about tribal energy. It's about uh, being at one with our family. And now we're gonna look at a transition exercise from the chakra one into the chakra two. It communicates with both, and this is squatting. So the reformer is one of the best ways to practice and really refine a squatting position. So a lot of people in our culture, the idea of going into a full squat is, seems impossible because our ankles and our knees and our hips aren't ready for it. On the reformer and with some extra props, we can build up all these floors so we feel really supported and we have that spring tension under us that's talking to the length of our spine and also, I call it actually the spring in our spine and the spring in our legs. So this is a really nice place to do this. Now Philip Beach calls the squatting exercises a tuning exercise. We tune our body because it's built into our DNA. And I really, really think that this is true. And part of honing that second chakra energy is becoming comfortable with yourself so you can relate to other people really well. So I'd also like uh, teachers, before maybe you have a really hard client or you're gonna have a challenging day, practice some squatting positions. So this one might give you a few ideas what you can do. So here, we have a sticky, I have a smallish stability ball. This could be smaller. I also have a couple of blankets under me so my pelvis and my sitting bones feel comfortable. And then I have some stickies on the foot bar and the foot plate. I have a red and a blue spring on. So I'm gonna bring my feet onto the foot plate. And this is really nice because my feet can be pretty wide and I have a whole floor for my foot. Now I want to try to scoot my tail under the, the ball so that the ball supports my natural lumbar curve. And here at first, just experimenting, I don't have to straighten my legs all the way. Primary is how I'm holding my spine and my pelvis as I go out and in. And I'm getting this feeling as I press away that the spring is talking to that lift through the center of my spine and also the spring in my legs and gently coming in. And I also, when I go out, I can really pick up that energy of my suction cup feet. And then as I come in, the challenge is to keep that reaching energy of my suction cup feet and also the lift through the center of my spine. Now, what's also really nice here is to start to connect the upper core to the lower core. So having a yoga strap here on the bar is a really nice thing to do. So from here, staying connected into my mid-back, and my hands can slip a little bit as I start to straighten my leg, but I still am pulling back on the bar. And then as I come in, I can walk up the yoga strap to stay connected into my mid-back. And I'm trying to keep this length, shoulders over the hips, my tail moving under the bar as I straighten my legs, and I'm trying to keep my pelvis and my spine in that same position, staying really organized as I decelerate in. So from here, I can also start to do a little rotation. So I'm gonna hold onto the strap still, put one hand behind my head with the elbow forward, and as I start to press out, I wanna keep my pelvis in the same position, and I wanna rotate away so that left side that I'm rotating away from, I'm trying to really drop the left sitting bone down and lengthen through that side of the rib cage and gently come in. Again, primary is not straightening my legs. So as I go out, 
Can I keep that same organization in my pelvis and in my spine and stay long in the side that I'm rotating away from, my right pelvis and my right rib cage, and then guide myself back in? Now the real lesson here for people who can't squat and are trying to become better squatters is the coming in, right? And so there's two ways that you can do this. To make it a little bit easier, you can still use the yoga strap. So they go out and then as they come in, can they keep the spine nice and long, hinge from the pelvis and come forward? And then they can hold here. This is really nice, really nice deep um, hip flexion and knee flexion and then really able to use the feet to kind of shoot the spine out of the pelvis and then I'm pulling back with the yoga strap. Feels so yummy on my hips and my pelvic floor. Another way that you can do this if people are a little bit more flexible, they can hold onto the bar. Oh, so nice in the inner thighs. And I'm pulling back on the bar and I'm shooting my spine out of my wide pelvis. My feet are pressing into the foot plate. Again, really nice for my hips, my pelvic floor, ah, and my inner thighs. And I'm trying to keep this balanced length on both sides of my spine. That's it for today. If you have an observation or a question you'd like answered in an upcoming episode, comment below, on Facebook, Twitter, or on the forum. See you next time, and never stop learning.